Welcome to the sayings of Jesus. In today's message, The Helper, Dr. McLuhan teaches that Jesus promised to send his followers a helper who will be with us and in us, overcoming the challenges of life. Jesus had one last meal with his disciples in the upper room before he was arrested later that same evening. He used those final last few hours with his disciples to release some of the most important sayings that he left us to hold on to. He already had told them he was going away and that he was going to be crucified. And naturally, they were afraid and confused by what Jesus had said. They had the feeling that they were about to be abandoned like orphans. And Jesus was aware of those feelings rising up within his beloved disciples. And so he said to them, I will not leave you as orphans, John chapter 14 and verse 18. Now, if as a young person you were separated from your parents, you'll recall what a terrible feeling that was. We've had a couple of incidents where children ran off and we were just so terrified as parents and by the grace of God they were found. That's a terrible feeling to be orphaned. In today's message, we learn that we can never be separated from God like orphans. This is why Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. John chapter 16 and verse 7. What Jesus said to his disciples laid the foundation for us to know that we are not orphans. It all begins with having a loving relationship with God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Whenever we have trouble following God's will for our lives, it's an indication that we have lost sight of how much God loves us or how much we are struggling to love him or to love what he has asked us to do. Now, regardless of how much we have learned to love God, here is what Jesus promised. Wherever you are on the loving God scale and obeying God's scale, <clears throat> here is a powerful promise from Jesus. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, <clears throat> even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. What a great promise. After his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus went directly to heaven. And his first act upon returning to heaven was to ask Father to send Holy Spirit to help us live successful spiritual lives. Jesus identified Holy Spirit as helper or the helper. He said, I will ask Father to send my followers help. Oh, isn't it so good to know there's help from heaven for whatever we are facing today. Now, the Greek word for help has many layers of meaning. We should understand some of these. Helper is one who helps us do what God calls us to do. How many of you need help to do what God calls you to do. He'll never ask you to do something. He doesn't empower you by his Holy Spirit, give you the will and the desire and the ability to do exactly what he has said. Holy Spirit is someone who comforts us when we are discouraged, when life doesn't go the way we expected, when we're disappointed, when we lose loved ones. The Holy Spirit comforts like no other person can comfort. The Holy Spirit is someone who can defend us like an attorney or an advocate when we need help. 
The Holy Spirit is someone who prays for us. The Bible is so clear that the Spirit of God lives to make intercession for you and for me. Aren't we so glad that when you pray and you don't know how to pray, the Spirit takes whatever prayer you have prayed and translated in a way that moves the heart of God. We pray in the Spirit and we pray in tongues and we pray with our mind and we pray from our bellies. When we cry out to God, the Holy Spirit tells God, look down on my child, have mercy on him and have mercy on her. Jesus promised that we will have the help that we need, whatever problems that we are called upon to face. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of help I need. This is the kind of help that is available to every follower of Jesus. But there's more. Jesus used a word that is a very important and carefully chosen word to describe the helper that he wants us to understand. I will ask the Father, Jesus said, and he will give you another helper. John chapter 14 and verse 16, and we're looking at the word another. The word Jesus chose for another is very specific. It means another of exactly the same kind. Now, how many of you had a problem or a trusted friend and you always called your friend and your friend came and he or she knew exactly what to do to solve the problems? But one time you uh, had a need and your person, your friend said, look, I'm sorry, I can't come this time. But I have a friend, and I can send my friend, and my friend will be able to help you. Don't worry. He's as good as I am. And then you found out <laughs> that that person didn't know exactly what your other friend knew, and that friend couldn't help you in the particular situation that you are facing. You can never experience that because he was not the same as. He was similar, but not the same and Jesus said, I'm going to send you another who is as good as me. He knows as much as I know. He can do as much as I can do. <clears throat> That's very good news. Then Jesus went on to say, the helper is actually better than me because of my physical limitations. I can only help the people who are in front of me and the friends of people who are in front of me. Even if Jesus prayed long distance, he prayed for the person who came to make the appeal. Jesus said, I'm next to you, but the helper will be in you. The helper will be in many places and any place at the same time. The helper I'm sending can be everywhere with anyone at the very same moment. I wish someone had made this as clear to me as I'm making it to you or trying to make it to you right now. For years, I used to say, if only I could have lived in the times of Jesus and the apostles. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah. You ever thought, I'd love to have seen Jesus and the miracles that he did. I'd love to watch Jesus feed the 5,000. I'd love to watch Jesus still the storms. <clears throat> well, I think most people have some way felt that and and I used to think that until I understood that the Holy Spirit does through me what Jesus did with that home, same Holy Spirit in the presence of people who lived in the first century. Well, <clears throat> here it is. The Holy Spirit is in you, and he is powerful enough to help you and to me to do everything that Jesus did. Amen. I used to think that was poetry. Jesus said, the works I do, you can do, and even greater. I said, that's just not possible because I didn't understand and I didn't believe that the Holy Spirit wanted to do through me just what he did through Jesus. And I'm pulling you to come into this powerful understanding. You can do what Jesus did because you have access to the same power that Jesus had access to. He had access to the Holy Spirit and he's given that Holy Spirit to you and to me. Jesus said, the helper will be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, 
You know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Followers of Jesus have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. That is why Jesus could confidently say, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. John chapter 14, verse 18 and 20. And Jesus went on to say, whoever keeps my commandments and keeps them, has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. That is, I will show myself to him. John chapter 14 and verse 21. Please don't let anyone try to deceive you with the idea that God cannot love you and cannot have a relationship with you. God created us to love us and to be in a growing relationship with him, facing all the challenges that we face in life. Now, sadly, this great promise from Jesus has been twisted by some Islamic scholars to say that Jesus was not referring to the Holy Spirit, but he was referring to Muhammad. And many people overseas, when I meet them, say to me, we follow Jesus because Muhammad said, or Jesus said, that he would send Muhammad. That may seem like a strange thought to you. And so let me help you understand a little bit about how all of this came about. There's a verse in the Quran that says this, those who follow the messenger, referring to Muhammad, that unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scripture, they as you and me, And our own scripture is the Torah, that is the law, and the Injil, the New Testament. It is they who will prosper. This is Al-Afraf, that's the seventh chapter of the Quran, and it's verse or ayat number 157. And so 1,400 years, Muslims have been looking through the Bible to try to find the place that might talk about Muhammad. It'll be interesting to you to know that there are two particular places they go to, although there are other scriptures that are being referred to. But these two passages, I'll just touch on them very briefly today. Uh, Some think that there's one in the Old Testament from Deuteronomy. It's a passage that you'll already be very familiar with it. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers, It is to him who you will listen. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 15. If you know the Bible at all, you'll clearly know that this is a reference to Jesus. Muhammad was not Jewish. Cannot possibly refer to him. This is a clear reference to Jesus. Not many people try to use that verse with me. But there's another verse in the New Testament that many Muslims have attempted to use with me. And they say to me, Muhammad is the comforter who Jesus talked about in John chapter 14. And these came from some Indian scholars, some of them living in Durban, where I spent many years. And here's an important question. Did Muhammad live inside the followers of Jesus? Well, of course not. He was not born until 600 years after all the disciples had died. And here's an even more important question. Does Muhammad live inside of Muslims? And no Muslim will ever tell you that Muhammad lives inside of them. So several years ago, I was asked to address some students at one of the largest private Muslim schools, uh, schools in a Muslim country. And after the lecture was over, received kind appreciation for what I shared in the thoughts, but the professor tried to trick me. And so let me ask you a question. Did Jesus prophesy that Muhammad would come? And of course, I was so ready for the question and was glad to be asked. I thanked the professor for believing part of the Bible. I said, would the students like to go and look at this passage with me? Let's look at the sayings of Jesus. And let's take a few moments to think about what he said. 
And I ask the students exactly the question that I've asked you. Did Muhammad live inside the followers of Jesus, the disciples? And does Muhammad live inside of his followers today? And the professor who asked this question had a divine revelation about what the Bible actually said. And she turned to the person who arranged for me to give the lecture and said these words, Jesus could not possibly have been making a reference to Muhammad. Jesus could only have been speaking about the Spirit of God. And perhaps you were brave to believe that Jesus promised people that Muhammad would come. But like the professor who heard my lecture, your eyes have just been opened to see that this passage is not a reference to a prophet, but a reference to the Spirit of God. Now Jesus warned that there would be a spirit that would keep people from receiving this truth. It is the spirit of the world. This is what Jesus said. The world cannot receive this truth because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. John chapter 14 or 16 and 17. The spirit of the world blinds the eyes of people to see of whom Jesus spoke about in these verses we have looked at today. But like the professor who heard me speak, I open your eyes to see and to receive the truth that you have just heard. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him. John chapter 14 and verse 21. Ask Jesus to show himself to you. He has shown himself to millions of people seeking to know the truth. I invite you to ask Jesus to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. If you're already following Jesus, I invite you to believe that you can do all of the miracles Jesus did because the spirit of Jesus that was in Jesus is living in you right now. <clears throat> Come Holy Spirit, fill everyone listening to this message with your presence. Wash the scales off of the eyes of people to see what they have never seen before. Fill each one with the power of the Holy Spirit to live a life that is pleasing to you. Now, if you're not sure if you'll spend eternity with God in heaven, I invite you to follow the path that Jesus offered to all who are willing to accept it. Accept that he knows the way, he knows the truth, and he knows life. He died for you in your place so that you can spend eternity with God in the presence of him in heaven. Thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all things that separate you from God. If you just received Jesus as your Savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the sayings of Jesus. Father, we believe you have sent the Holy Spirit for us. Come and fill us now with your presence. Comfort and help us to live our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.